How's it going? Uh, Pastor Ernie here for the lesson. And uh, got a question for you, man. Do you ever feel like, um, like life or circumstances in life, do you ever feel like they seem to be giving you permission to be somebody that you know you're not supposed to be? Or to, to do things you're not supposed to do? Like, like, like stuff just starts happening in your life, around your life, and you feel a certain way about it, and then you feel like acting on that way that you, that you feel, and you know it's not who you are or who you're meant to be, but you somehow feel like life has just said for this one moment, just for this one time, that it's okay. I mean, circumstances just may have just seemed to have just give you an excuse. You know what I mean? And then, and, then, and then you have people around you that are like, yeah, just go ahead, go off, man. You know what I mean? You just go ahead and just, you know, you, 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 you got to pass here to, to, to do something you, differently than you'd normally do it. To act out in a way that is normally not who you have decided to be. To be someone that is very uncharacteristic of who you know you have determined to be. You ever feel like that? You ever feel that happen? But you don't do it. You don't go there. Why? Because you know that God has called you to be, to be. Hold on to that word right now, be, be, a tiny little word that means so much. To be somebody, something different. You know this. In the scriptures, there's a young man named Timothy. Um, I say young, he was approximately right around 30 years old or so when an older gentleman, the Apostle Paul, wrote him this letter. You see, Timothy was put in the mix of, of a lot of false teaching that was going on around him. He was in a town called Ephesus that was actually a port city and there was all kinds of, you know, all kinds of new ideas coming in and new ways of doing things and, uh, you, know, you know, new permissions to be somebody different coming in. And there was also all this false teaching surrounding the church that the Apostle Paul had established there years before. And Timothy, a young man, was in the middle of all this. And he was being challenged his leadership was being challenged. His faith was being challenged, all right? His, even his, I believe, even his uh, relationship to the Apostle Paul in whom, you know, had established him to be there and lead, I believe that was also being challenged. You see, people respected Paul. They didn't know who this Timothy guy was. And the Apostle Paul wrote him a letter after, uh, after hearing him all the stuff that's going on. He was just kind of encouraging him and challenging him. And I believe he also wrote this letter for the church and, and men and women in the church, not just for church leadership or church pastors, but, but for you and me to understand that we always need to be exactly who God has called us to be and who we have determined to be in the midst of craziness and chaos as well as in the midst of, of calm and, 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 and even victory in great times. He, he tells them this. He tells them this, he says, he says, Timothy, and this is out of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Father, this is your word, and we need your direction and your guidance here. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. He tells Timothy this, he says, do not, says, let no one despise you for your youth. I mean, just because you're young and, you're, and, you're, and you know you're already in leadership. Now, this is relatable to you and I because 
whether you, I guarantee you, every one of you are younger than somebody, okay? All right? I don't know that anybody here watching is the oldest person on the planet. So every one of us can, can own this in a sense. All right? Yes, I'm young. All right? He says, let no one come at you or despise you or judge you or discredit you just because of your youthfulness or because you're younger than them. You see, God has called you and me, every one of us, to lead. If you have given your life to Christ and the spirit of the living God dwells in you, then you're here to lead. And he says, let nobody discredit that leadership just because maybe you haven't been around longer than they have. He says, but set the believers an example. He doesn't just say be an example. He says set an example. Set the bar right here. Say, look, here's, here's where we begin. We don't begin way down here. We begin up here as followers of Jesus Christ. He says set the bar right up here. Hold it. Set this example. And then you'll be the example. Set the example uh, to the believers in speech, in the way that you talk about things that are going on. People were coming at him with false doctrine. He was ready to refute it because Timothy was well in doctrine, <laughs> if you will, uh, and, and understood in the way of Jesus, in the scriptures, in the death, the burial, and resurrection, in the purpose of the church on the planet, in the power and presence and, and movement of the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God. P Timothy knew these things. He studied under the best and learned under the best, the Apostle Paul. Not the best of the best, Jesus Christ, but the best, the Apostle Paul. So he says, even though you know what is right, even though you know what is true, and you, you, and you can just nail these people, he says, set the example in the way you talk about these things and in the way you talk to people and then the way that maybe you have a conversation as they bring you false things and things that aren't true and as they attack you. Don't repay like for like. He says, set the example in the way that you speak about these things. Speak with this grace, this tone of love. Set them an example in the way you speak and in your conduct. Set the example in the way you act. You're talking a certain way. Do you behave the same way? We're gonna talk more about that in a minute. Set an example in the way that you act and the way that you conduct your affairs and the way that you handle good news and bad news and the way that you handle attack and the way that you handle your victories and the way that you handle everyday life Set an example, set the bar. He says, set the example in speech, in conduct, and in love. In love. In love. You see, I don't know that we can truly set an example in love until we at least try to begin how much, to know how much we really are loved. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to people and have, have had terrible circumstances happening in their life and they think, God doesn't love me. No, that's untrue. Jesus said that we will have terrible circumstances. He literally said, in this world, you will have tribulations, literally terrible circumstances. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world and you're with me. So you can't judge the love of Christ on the behavior of other people or the way of the world. He says, in this world, while we're here, it's gonna come. How much better for it is you, for you to dwell and abide in my love. Set the example to the believers in speech, the way you speak, the way you conduct your life, and in the way you dwell in the love of Christ and express that love to one another. Set the example also in faith, he says, in your trust. Do you really 
really trust God in all things? Do you really trust him? Set the example that shows that trust, not as a show off of your trust, not as a show off of this faith, not showing off your confidence, but just setting the example because you're living a life of trust, of faith in God. And because of those things, the way you speak, the way you conduct your life, the way you dwell in his love and express his love, and the way you trust God with your whole life, past, present, and future, then you can set this next bar in life of purity. He says, set the example in speech, conduct, love, faith, and in purity. And he's not just talking about sexual purity. He's talking about an unmixed life. As you have, 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 have determined to be this person who is unshakable, to be this person. I'm not saying this person doesn't cry. I'm not saying this person doesn't hurt. I'm not saying this, pus- this person doesn't feel pain. I'm not saying that this person is, is, is never discouraged. What I'm saying is this person trusts continually and lives a greater reality, a greater reality than is than is the immediate reality around you. There's just a greater reality about your life. And when you establish this life, you determine to be this person with God, in God, for God, to God, because of God. He tells you now live an unmixed life. Do not allow any impurities in there. Set an example of purity. In other words, this is unmixed. There's nothing else getting in here. This is the life I have determined to be. So then when you are challenged by life and circumstances in life and feel that it has just handed you an opportunity to be someone you know that you char- you know that is uncharacteristic of who you normally are because of who you're determined to be, of who you are in Christ, of who you trust in Christ, when life hands you this, this quote-unquote free ticket, this actually lie, to just for a moment be somebody you're not supposed to be or you know you're not supposed to be. You know you've determined not to be. You don't allow that impurity to mix in. Praise the Lord. He says a few things after that, but then he goes on and one of my favorite verses in the scripture, his most challenging verse, one of the most challenging verses is 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Or he says, he tells Timothy this. He says, keep a close watch on yourself and on your teaching. Well, actually, he says the teaching. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. What does he mean? He says, you've, you, 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 you've determined to be this person. All right? You've determined to set an example, to set the bar of, 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 of what this person looks like, this man, this woman of God. Now, watch closely because life is gonna come and bombard you with things. Again, it doesn't mean that you cannot, you know, it doesn't mean you're not gonna feel the hit. It doesn't mean that you're not gonna feel, you know, the hurt and the pain and the tension and the discouragement, and the disappointment. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel those things, man. It just means that you're better equipped to handle them in his spirit for his glory. So he says, keep a close watch on your life. Watch yourself. We're real good at watching other people, ready to point out where they're missing the mark. He says, no, man, you pay attention to you. And the things that you're talking about and the way that you talk about them. He says, keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. Continue in this. Pursue this. Don't let up on this. Want some, get some is what I'm talking about this. 
Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. What does that mean? Save yourself from circumstances and from, from regret, from remorse, some circumstances that you yourself put yourself in because you didn't pay attention, because you didn't keep a close watch. You save yourself from these foolish, you know, the, the day after the regret, like, ah, oh, man, I wish I didn't. Why did I, you know, what was I thinking? Those type of things. And, and, and he says, save both yourself and your hearers. How does it save your hearers from that? Because they look at you as a woman or a man of integrity. Of integrity. She really believes this. He is owning this. They really, really trust who they say they trust. I want to look into that a little more. That's how. Again, the question ends up once again. What story do you want to tell? When it all comes down to it, what story will you tell? Will it be one of, of faith, of love, of purity? One that they could say, do you see that they, they, your actions, your conduct backs up and the way you talk matches your conduct? Or will it be one of inconsistency? Well, wait a second, I thought you were, why are you, are people gonna be looking at you, giving you excuses? Well, it was because of this that you're acting like this and that you behaved this, that you did this thing. That's not the story I wanna tell. I wanna tell a story to where you look at me you're going to love Jesus and you're going to trust Jesus. That's the story I want to tell. I want to tell the story that, that where, 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 where people will look and see and say, Jesus is really is alive. There's no way. I want people to, to know Jesus more than I'd ever want them to know me. But since so many already do know me, maybe, and that don't know Jesus, hopefully through that knowledge, through that relationship, they'll get to know Jesus. That's the story I want to tell. What about you? Jesus loves you, man. So do I. See you guys next time.